I'm ready. Okay. Okay. <laughs> David here. And I'm Izzy. Welcome back. And today we have a Valentine's Day special for you. So uh, we went on one of our very favorite picks in North Carolina a few years ago when I was still in the army. <laughs> okay, I don't know. More than Timing, a few years ago. Uh, time goes by quickly when you're having fun. So uh, this was on a farm where, uh, I mean, we're talking like everything. This place had barns and barns and barns full of anything you can imagine. This lady called herself a hoarder. Like, she was very proud of the fact that she was a hoarder. And I think she went to clear space and get money for more things yeah. to collect. And I think, if I remember right, she even said that uh, this was not the first auction. I think this was an auction yeah, that she had had to get rid of things on this property that we got these from, the item that we're about to talk about. Yeah, uh, especially in North Carolina, a lot of people had so much land and outbuildings that the auctions were just boxes and boxes of stuff because they would put it in the building and forget about it. Yeah. Um, so we bought a box full of letters that she had said she had started using for wallpaper and couldn't remember where she bought them, um, but she had held on to them. And they're all written to one man, so they're not from his perspective, from other people's. And we've read a lot of them. I wouldn't say all of them. We have read a lot of them. Quite a few. They also, they cover about, I think, a 10-year, almost a 10-year period. Yeah, just about. I think it's like 1905 to 11 or 1911 or 12. It's pretty close. And when we first got the letters, it was about 10 years ago. And we tried to find anyone related to them. I usually do that if I find anything with like a name or full name. Um, but we couldn't find anything. And he also used a few different last names and first names. So we're not really sure which one he would have used when he started his family. But maybe we should look again because there's a lot more people on uh, like genealogy sites Yeah, now. and a lot more stuff's been digitized and things like that. So maybe we'll give it another go. We bought these only because we like old ephemera and old yeah, things. We but we do. I think this was right after David had come back from his first deployment. So a couple of letters was really exciting to us. And I think that's why I've held on to almost all of them this whole time. Because it's just something nice and cute to keep. It's very cute. They look great. And they have great stories in the letters themselves. So yeah. it's really fun to keep them, think about them, and sometimes reread them for the great story. Yeah. So these are, we picked a few that are from different years and different people. But kind of on the theme of Valentine's Day. So we thought it would be fun to share like a wide variety of letters and postcards yeah all right so here's the first thing it is a little photograph of two ladies uh, i'm not sure whose this is because uh, i was just loose in the stack of letters i think it's like tintype but that was out of fashion by the time these letters were written so I'm not sure if it was from a girl that he liked that sent it to him or if it was like a relation and he happened to like maybe have his mom's photo or something. Um, but one of the girls does mention in another letter going to, I think going to like a fair or a festival in town to take a picture. And I did read that online that that was like a novel, tintype pictures were like a novelty photo then. So, like, us going and taking, like, an old-timey picture. At the at, fair. Or yeah, or, like, if you go to a tourist town, there's always, like, an old-timey photo studio. So it could have been that, too, and it was just, like, oh, hilarious. Look at how they used to do photographs. <laughs> uh, that was the only picture in all of the letters we had, even though all of the girls mentioned sending him photos. So here we have our, our first postcard. It has some kind of, like, fabric or uh, cloth on the front of it. There's no date. But based on who is writing and what she said, this would be from about 1911. So it says, Dear Lynn, just arrived from church. We are having real winter weather. We hear the sleigh bells and it makes me homesick. The girls are all sleeping but May and myself and she's busy writing. Hoping to hear 
from you soon from your wife, Ada. So that's how we know what year it is from because I also have this receipt, which was in the letters. And this is from July 23rd, 1910. And it is a receipt for a genuine diamond ring for $100. And then you can also see that he got a credit of $12, so he had to put some of it on credit. So next we have two postcards, and even though one isn't written on or signed, you can see from the back that they are sent by the same person at the same time. Same person, nice. Yeah, and they're actually postmarked February 14th. Ooh, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. So one obviously looks like a valentine, and the other one... It looks like it got forwarded because he had moved before, after they sent it. And it's a picture of a street, and it says South Charlotte Street, Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Mannheim, Pennsylvania, yep. And it says, Dear friend, we'll send you this to give you an idea of our town. This is the street I live on. Hope to see you soon. From Catherine. This is 1906. Catherine and he wrote for at least two years because we have letters from her into 1908 So I think this is when they were just getting to know each other, but I guess still friendly enough to send Valentine's And here's the other one It's really pretty, but it looks pretty similar to how Valentine's look now. Yeah, it sure does. Like, it's a pretty timeless look. Yeah, and she didn't sign it So I guess uh, she wasn't expecting anyone else to send him Valentine's <laughs> So these were from before he started talking to Ada. So here's a letter from July of that same year. Um, this one's also from Catherine. 1906, right? From 1906, yeah. So this isn't the <clears throat> happiest of letters, but she talks about stuff that we kind of are all going through now or a lot of us have been lately. So I thought it was interesting to read. Lancaster, Pennsylvania, on July 31st, 1906. Dear Lynn, will try and answer your letter and telegram, letters and telegram, which I received. Well, Lynn, I have the blues. Ever since I left Minnie's place, when I first came up here, I was feeling so sick, I could hardly do my work. So I was glad to get to bed as soon as possible. I received your telegram Sunday Eve, and I was going to come down to the station, but instead of coming, I took very sick that night and in the morning had a very high fever. They sent for the doctor, and he said, stay in bed and keep very quiet, and don't eat anything but drink milk. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was a... But drink milk. Drink milk. I drink one glass of, one glass of milk all day. So that is the reason I was not there. I would have answered your last letter sooner, but I almost thought you must be cross at me for acting so mean. Lynn, don't think I don't care for you, because that is not the case. But when you feel blue, you don't care for anything. Don't be surprised if you get a picture in about three weeks. Lynn, I guess you think I did not care for your box of candy, but I did, and I thank you very very much for i for it i still have the box well i guess i must bring my letter to a close for this time so goodbye from your friend Catherine. please write and let me know if you are cross or maybe you found someone else because i did not answer if you did not and you are not cross we will be friends as before answer at once and let me know goodbye xxxx excuse bad writing in paper <laughs> So I thought that it was really cute that, well, like, she felt bad that she missed his visit, but she was like, I was just blue, and when you're blue, you don't even talk to people. Sorry. Hope we're still friends. I hope the milk helped her feel better. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. Drink milk. Drink milk. Be Ooh. quiet. All right, we have one more from Catherine, and this is from December 1906. They did end up writing each other for a few years, and some of his other letters that were written from friends mention Catherine. So I think they were pretty serious, even if they didn't I end up so together. Too. So I'm just giving her a little bit of permission, a little bit of forgiveness before what we read in this letter. So Lancaster, Pennsylvania, 
December 29th, 1906. That's like six months after the last one we read. Yeah. It's also on this really pretty blue paper. Um, my dear Lynn, will answer your letter, which I received the other day, and was very glad to hear that you are enjoying yourself and that you arrived home safe. Well, Lynn, I stayed at Elizabethtown till Thursday Eve. Then my sister and I went to the ball and had a real nice time. Well, just I was all dressed and was going out the door, I slipped off the last step and knocked the back of my neck on the edging and hurt my hip. I received your postals and thank you very much for them. <laughs> I think that they are very pretty. Well, Lynn, dear, I will change the subject. She very abruptly <clears throat> changed it a minute ago, and yeah. now she has to, like, lead into it. You remember of you saying you could send me money every month when I told you that I was going to write and ask my brother to send me some? Well, I wrote two to him, and he said he is sorry to tell me, but he has a girl himself, and said that he gives her $15 every month. Oh! And he said that if I have a SH, which I guess means sweetheart, Gotta be sweetheart. I don't know what else that could be. If I have a SH, he is sure he will send me $15. That is, if he thinks anything of me, and I am sure you do. And I'm sure he does. <laughs> yeah, this is like, they were together a couple more years, so yeah. I'm sure he does think of something of her. Lynn, he I... He must. He kept these letters for a long time. That is true. Although he kept a lot of letters that yes, other people true. wouldn't have. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lynn, I suppose you think I just want you for your money, but such is not the case, and I know you have it to send if you want to. So if you think anything of me, you will send it to me, but please write and let me know in your next letter so I will know. If you don't, I must hire out because boarding is too high and wages stay the same. Catherine's over here being relatable 115 years later. Oh yeah. Pay doesn't go up, the rent does. <laughs> So I will bring my letter to a close with love and best wishes, wishing you and all a happy new year. Give your mother my best regards. Lynn, please answer at once and let me know what you intend to do. So goodbye from your SH, Catherine. Sweetheart. Gotta be. P.S. Please do not let anyone see this letter. So I think your best plan would be to burn it or else they might think I just want you for your money. But such is not the case, dear. XXXX. Uh, he did not burn it. <laughs> he didn't. I'm glad he didn't, because we got to read that. But maybe that means he also thought she was his SH. Yes. Oh, I think the burning was the she, her asking for money. Yeah. It's okay. We don't judge you, Catherine. <laughs> we love you, Catherine. So this next one, I don't know if it's a love letter. Uh, it's from, like, the person signs it with initials. But they do talk about Valentine's, so I thought it was still interesting to share. Hamill, Pennsylvania, March 27th, 1906. So this is a little bit earlier. Yeah. Dear friend, I suppose you was beginning to think that I was not going to answer your letter, but I have been tending the meeting about every night and did not get time to answer it. Hoping you will excuse me this time. We are having an excellent meeting at our church this winter. There are 11 converts and three seekers yet. Blaine and Lowen? I think that's an L. Blaine and Lowen were converted. Gertrude was too. I suppose you are enjoying slaying out there now. We had a good slaying out for about a week, but it is gone today. And this is in March. Wait. Right. It's probably in the Northeast somewhere. It's in Pennsylvania. Yeah, so. Um, we have two days of school yet. Summer school begins on the 24th of April. School begins on the 24th of April. I think I will go. Not sure. Did maybe. You, maybe you'll go, maybe you won't. Eh, we'll see. You may guess the time we are having with the girls out here. But what? What? I don't... Converting? I don't, I don't think he meant at church. <laughs> is he converting them or is he having... I think he's having dates. Okay. Okay. And then okay, I will say church. we don't we don't know how old these people are writing it, but they're all about the age that they're getting jobs and leaving home. Mm -hmm, yeah. So older teenager ish yeah. to young twenties. Definitely between fifteen and twenty two. Yeah, this is probably a good 
part to say in the video that there were a couple of fairly suggestive letters. Mm, yeah. And I'm not going to read them because I don't know how old they were. And I don't want... Even if they were adults in their mind, I'm not reading that from a young teenager. Now. Yeah, that's fair. It was interesting, though. Maybe if I can find other ages, we'll read them. Um, okay. Having fun with the girls. That I suppose you are having as good a time as I am. How are you and that girl getting along out there? Probably Catherine. I think that's Catherine, because Catherine's not from the same time as him. There has not been very much happening out here lately. Only... Uh, Ava Rich was at church on last Sunday evening with her big baby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lawrence and Laura are not married yet, but will be soon. But the best of all is that Angus Schrankel cut rover shields from Hux. What? I have no idea what that means. How could he do but that? But it is very big deal, okay? Oh my gosh. Him and Roll are making mind props now. So I guess he got a new job. Good for him. I wonder what those are. Mind props? Is that like the... Sh like the shores and mines oh like structure? they prop up mines maybe i have I don't no know. idea oh I mine props. About mining propping the mine open maybe maybe i don't think it's like movie props it's probably no i don't think open. so um but that's the biggest gossip from town mm -hmm. they got new jobs i wish you were out here now clara does say very much about you for the boys has teased her so much about you there is no one going with her now I would like to have seen Dorn's girls when they got that valentine. I got two dandies, one of them coming from you. I must close for this time, answer soon, from your friend, J... G... G... J. G. Billhart. Answer soon. Dandies? Me? Oh, maybe like just a really good one. Yeah. Like I got a really good one. Like they looked really nice? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which that's actually interesting because... Like, yeah, kids give them to their friends. Yeah. But as adults, really, Valentine's is, like, just romance now. But this sounds very much, like, even if it was a girl writing him, like, they're just friends. They're yeah. talking about all the um, gossip and stuff and yeah. nothing, like, romantic at all. I mean, they write letters all the time, so probably getting a Valentine was just a cool, fun thing to do with your friends back then. That is true. All right, we're going to go back to February or forward. Back to the future. Back to the future. I said it first. Darn it. Back to February of 1908. And this is from Ada, who he married, but before. Ada. This is when yeah. they were still dating. From Smicksburg. Smicksburg, Pennsylvania. Did you know that he just guessed it? I'm guessing. Okay. February 9th, 1908. Just before? Before Valentine's Day. Yeah. Dear Lynn. This fine winter evening will now endeavor to answer your kind and ever welcome letter, which came to hand some time ago. I suppose you will think I am not going to write. Really, you can hardly tell when to write, for the mail hasn't gone for several days. The roads were drifted shut. We have lots of snow, but too much to make good sleigh. Some places the roads look like tunnels. Once the roads get better, we are going to get up a sled load and go someplace for a dance and wish you were here to go along. Just like a bunch of teenagers nowadays, like, carpooling to, like, whatever hangout they're going to. Yeah. Hey, if you don't have your own sled. <laughs> yeah. Well, you gotta, you gotta get a sled load then. Get a sled load going. There was a sled load went to Valier a Friday night a week ago, but there was only ten went. We wouldn't go, for we didn't think it would look well for us to go when we had church. I hardly know how to put the time in since church quit. I guess I will start to school again. Eh, whatever. If well, I want to go back to school. <laughs> no church. I'm bored. This more <laughs> church. Maybe I should go back to school or something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I guess you can just go to church or go to school whenever you feel like it back then. Yes. I was going away and mama don't want me to go till it gets nicer weather, so I guess I will have to obey like all good girls should. Ha ha. Not a good girl, apparently. <laughs> or she doesn't want to listen to mama. Yeah, she wants to that's go back to true. School. 
Mama has been sick for the last three weeks and is hardly able to get around yet. She has the rheumatism. We have had two funerals in the last three weeks. Mrs. Sprankle and Mrs. Wilhelm, both old ladies. To change the subject, I was at Sunday school and church this morning. Are you having any cold weather down your way? We are having our share of it now. Was it below zero? Was it below zero this morning? So you know that is pretty cold weather. Wait, was that a number? Oh, was one? Let's... Oh, was one Fahrenheit below zero? You think? It could be Fahrenheit or eleven. It could just be like eleven or. Oh, eighteen. Okay, yeah, it was eighteen below zero this morning. See, that's also how some of them write their T's. Yeah, keys. that's really hard to tell. And they all went to the same school, so they write really similar, but yeah. was was 18 below zero this morning makes sense. That's really cold. Yeah. So you know that's pretty, that's pretty cold weather. Yeah. Don't you worry about me losing sleep over Mr. Sprinkle going to Virginia, for he and I haven't spoke for nearly a year, so you know how much sleep I will lose. Ha ha. I think if everything goes right, Grace and I will go to Kobo a Saturday and stay over Sunday. That is, if Mama gets able to do the work. Hey, wait a second. Wasn't Sprinkle one of the friends of the guy in the other letter? Uh, well, no. Sprinkle fired oh, her friend. Dear. And also, oh. old Mrs. Sprinkle. Sprinkle just died. Okay. So, yeah. Church is going on at Martian, at the old church, and at Kobo. Hmm. Have you got any Valentines yet? Valentines? I got one pretty one. Ha ha. Must have been from Lynn. Right? I think that's from him. She's pretty avid about underlying how pretty it was. If I could get a real pretty one, would send it to you. But really, the ones you get around here aren't fit to send. She must really like the one he sent her then. Yeah. But, you know, small town valentines are not fit to send. Uh, they are... They are having a valentine social at the Hamilton on valentine night. The people are busy cutting ice. I suppose they will all keep good this summer. To change the subject, Mr. Modern was here last night. He said he was putting up ice yesterday, so I suppose he is going to keep good this summer. That's not changing the subject. It's that's the be exact same thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's gotta be some kind of weird saying. Yeah, it's gotta be a saying from there. Nearly all the people around here has the chicken pox or oh, gripe. Dear. And if you want the chicken pox, just come up for it would not be hard to get them. Oh my gosh. So I don't know I don't know if this is a D or an L. I think it's Laura based on someone else's letter, but uh, Laura Shields was over at Uncle John's the other Sunday. And I was teasing Harry about her coming over to see him, and he wasn't at home, for this is the leap year. I saw in the paper where several ladies have took advantage of leap year. Okay, so I don't know what this last word is. I cannot read it at all, but I looked it up because I think this has to be a saying or something. And I guess it was like a joke tradition mm -hmm. or acceptable practice that if your beau was a little bit too shy, mm -hmm. you could ask him on leap year day to only marry you. Only on leap year day. Only on leap year day. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So I thought that, so she's teasing Harry because his girlfriend came over on leap day and he was not there. Uh oh. So she could not ask him. Uh, so she read in the paper some ladies have done it. But it wouldn't be me. In other words, <clears throat> I'm not gonna propose to you. You better propose to me. Which we can see where her her uh, her thoughts are. Is her next line is, "Will elope as news is scarce." <laughs> <laughs> yep. Answer soon with love. Yours sincerely, Ada. S W A S K. Sealed with a sweet kiss. So I guess that she uh, she didn't ask him, maybe, but. He didn't give her a chance to the next leap here. Nope. All right, here's our last one. And we're going to end with one that was written on Valentine's Day, 1905. 1905. From what we can gather, this is like right when he started leaving home for work. I think so, yeah. 
Uh, so from Marchand, Pennsylvania. Marchand, Pennsylvania. I'm really sorry if you live near there and I'm saying that wrong. February 14th, 1905. Mm, Valentine's Day. Dear friend, I thought I would answer your kind and welcome letter I received Saturday. I am well and hope these few lines will find you the same. I was at home four weeks when I had the measles and I didn't know you left till Willa Thomas told me on Saturday I was up and she asked me if I got a letter from you since you left. Then on Monday I went to school and the boy said, I wonder what the matter with Clara. She looks pale since you were gone. This is Clara writing it. But actually she has the measles. Oh. No, she's lovesick. <laughs> it's Valentine's yes, Day. Yes, okay? both not of those. The measles. Not the measles at all. Just lovesick. She's been in bed, probably drinking milk for four weeks. <laughs> Gone pale from the milk. Uh, Wade McConaughey act as if he was going crazy about you leaving. If you would have heard what he said to one, he said, It was my last chance of die an old maid and a good many other things. So I think they're definitely young enough that they tease each other about boys and girls and dating. Yeah, it sounds like it. Now you're going to be an old maid because he left. But you're in school, so I can't be that <laughs> old. Where did you Which they voluntarily chose to go to. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> they were so bored, maybe. I don't know. Man, imagine missing a month of school and then going back and like your boyfriend's gone. Yeah, that's crazy. It must not have been that serious if you didn't tell her. I don't know. Back then, if you had to leave for work or something, you would just leave. I don't think that's true. <laughs> when the opportunity came. Well, I think he could have left a letter. Yeah, he could have. But we do have one from a year later that they're not together. So right. So. I think they kind of just liked each other. Yeah, he kept a letter from he Clara. Did. Yeah, but he kept a lot of letters. He did. It's from banks and stuff. Yeah, too, true. So. Where did you hear that about that girl you asked me about? It true. I really want to know. I guess that's something we can't put in paper. I would like to know what was said. We thought there'd be a wedding, but I hardly think now anymore. So, I guess uh, the boy was super in love with her and then left. No wedding now. I don't know. I was just watching Pride and Prejudice like last week. So now I'm like, oh, he left her because his friends and evil sisters convinced oh, no. me to leave. But there is not going to be a wedding. Our meeting has not began yet. It was going to begin two weeks ago, and it rained every Sunday night since. Say, you was not any better than I was, or you would have not got the measles. Apparently you get the measles from going out? I don't know. <laughs> it's contagious, I think. Was it like... 1900s mono. <laughs> I don't know. Not oh my gosh. Go out on a date, get the measles. I will always remember you in my prayers. Have you no snow down in that part of the country? If you don't, and you want some, come back and you get it here. I am drifted in and I cannot get any place these days. Are you going to come back this summer and help roll matter to... Thrash. I have not forgot to give you one of my pictures when I get them. Cousin Milton is coming down someday, he said, and he is going to bring his camera along. Then I will get them taken. Maybe I will tell you something you knew the next time. If it comes true. Like she loves him. I guess. Maybe I will tell you something. Something you knew the next time, if it comes true. I don't know. Something that I don't know. Maybe. Uh, that all for this time. The next time I'll think of something better. P.S. Excuse mistakes and poor writing. She does have the measles right now. And she's over the measles. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, she writes that on every single letter, though. Tell me how you want your name wrote the next time. I don't know if that means his address or if he had already started uh, using different names at like different jobs and stuff. Yeah. But also, this was pretty soon after he left home. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure 
if you look at these envelopes, they say Maryland, which it kind of tells you how uh, the world has gotten smaller because to me, I grew up in Maryland and I think Maryland and Pennsylvania are so close, but they might have seen it a lot differently than like snowdrifts locked them in for weeks and stuff like that. Yeah, that's true. All right, and now we're going to end with some Valentine's Day poems from 1905. So who uh, who wrote these poems? Oh, these are at the end of uh, Clara's letter to Lynn. Clara's letter. Clara's who we just read. Yeah, this is the end of the last letter. Okay. Okay. Really romantic stuff. Are you ready? I'm ready. Some may wish you pleasure. Mm -hmm. Some may wish you health. But I wish you a home in heaven where pleasure never fade. <sighs> so sweet. So sweet. Speaking of sweet. Let's hear it. Peaches is sweet. Pears is better. If you love me, answer my letter. Oh. <laughs> and if you love us, answer this question in the comments below. What was your favorite letter that we read today? Or postcard? Yeah, let's hear it. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching and happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day.